Today on Truths That Transform. The root of the problem of most of the great ills that have afflicted society and do afflict it today are caused by the teaching of evolution. For many years they argued that 98% uh, of our DNA was junk and that this provided evidence for evolution. And yet in the last 15 years, we've discovered that this so-called junk DNA actually serves some very important functions. Welcome to Truths That Transform, a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries, where we are standing for truth and defending your freedom. The creation account of the Bible is incompatible with a modern creation account of Darwinian evolution. That account, which purports to be scientific, tells us that man evolved from the apes. In fact, that all of life evolved ultimately from just one protein cell. Anyone who questions this account, we're led to believe, is essentially like someone who believes the earth is flat. But is that actually true? On today's program, you'll discover how evolutionary theory has led us into some of the greatest evils mankind has ever known. And as we begin, is macroevolution, that is the idea that one species of organism evolved into different kinds of organisms through the survival of the fittest, really the best explanation of the evidence we have. Our very own Dr. Jerry Newcomb takes a look. <laughs> Zombies have captured the imagination in many science fiction and horror movies and programs. But what do some experts mean by the phrase zombie science? Well, Jonathan Wells coined the phrase zombie science to capture a phenomenon in evolutionary biology where uh, pieces of evidence or arguments for Darwinian evolution that have been uh, rebutted and refuted just keep coming back. People reprise the same arguments over and over again, no matter how many times they've been refuted or rebutted by uh, or, or debunked by count counter evidence. In 2000, Dr. Jonathan Wells of the Discovery Institute published the landmark book, The Icons of Evolution, documenting the falsity of some of the theory's strongest arguments. For example, he shows that the famous peppered maws of England photographs, supposedly documenting evolution, were staged photographs. For this ministry, we interviewed him in 2004 about his book. Well, I, I wrote a book uh, back in 2000 uh, pointing out that the major evidences for evolution in biology textbooks are exaggerated, uh, distorted, in some cases even faked. The overwhelming response from the Darwinists was, no, they're not. They're just fine. In other words, they defended the various icons, uh, such as Heckel's embryos, which are known to be fakes, but despite exploding these myths, many scientists just repeat the lies over and over, hence the phrase zombie science. So there are many examples in the biological literature of arguments that are made in favor of Darwinian evolution that later turn out to be contrary to the evidence. And yet those arguments and evidences 
for Darwin and Darwinian evolution are never corrected in, uh, for example, biology textbooks. This is the kind of phenomenon that, that uh, Dr. Wells is talking about when he talks about zombie science, the same old bad um, and inaccurate evidences are being recycled no matter how many times they get refuted. Jonathan Wells provides some examples of what he calls zombie science. For example, Darwin's theory, in a nutshell, is that all creatures have common ancestry. That's the essence of Darwin's tree of life. But Wells notes that in scientific study, common ancestry does not actually pan out. Darwin's tree of life uh, purports to show that all living things come from one or a few common ancestors. When we look at the world of living things, we, we just automatically, intuitively group certain things together. People thought this was uh, evidence of God's design for creation. But for Darwin and some before him, uh, these are branches in a tree of life. The scientific establishment typically portrays the tree of life as a fact, uh, something we can't question. All things are, all living things are related through common ancestry. But even in 2000, there were empirical problems with this claim. Uh, you get different trees depending on what you look at. Something that's happened uh, fairly recently is the discovery of what are called orphan genes. These are stretches of DNA that are found only in one group, not in any other group. Well, from the viewpoint of evolutionary theory, this isn't supposed to happen because all genes supposedly descended from genes in the past. Uh, and yet, the more we study organisms, the more we find uh, orphan genes are just everywhere. They've been found in every organism whose whole genome has been studied so far. And they don't give you a tree of life because they don't trace back to anything ancestral. Uh, so nowadays, when biologists try to construct a tree of life using molecules, they just toss out the orphan genes. They just ignore them. The tree of life pattern of the history of life really doesn't match the pattern that we see in the fossil record. Another example involves what used to be called junk DNA, similar to what had been thought in previous times as vestigial organs, something we supposedly evolved out of. In my new book, Zombie Science, I touch on the issue of junk DNA, so-called junk DNA, about which I wrote another book several years ago, The Myth of Junk DNA. When uh, the function of DNA was first being uh, worked out, biologists realized that only about 2% of our DNA, of human DNA, codes for proteins. And even then, as I point out uh, elsewhere in the book, it doesn't completely code for protein even then. But 98% of our DNA, apparently, to them, had no function at all. And so Richard Dawkins and others argued that it was just a, a, a leftover from evolution, like a, a harmless parasite that just hitched a ride on the DNA that actually did something. And so for many years they argued that 98% uh, of our DNA was junk and that this provided evidence for evolution. And yet, uh, in the last 15 years, we've discovered that this so-called junk DNA actually serves some very important functions. Hardly a month goes by when some other element of so-called junk DNA is not reported to be functional. Now, interestingly enough, <clears throat> defenders of Darwinian evolution still insist that it's junk. So there's a, a controversy right now between uh, people who study the actual functions of DNA and those who insist that evolutionary theory is true no matter what. The latter, to me, is a form of zombie science. One of the most significant icons of evolution is the famous artwork showing apes evolving to man. This icon is seen all over the place. When I published Icons of Evolution in 2000, uh, what I called the ultimate icon was a drawing of an ape-like creature gradually morphing through more and more human-like animals into a modern human being. Uh, this is perhaps the most powerful icon of all. 
uh, it touches us most directly uh, in the sense that it's about our own origin. And it's basically uh, an imaginative drawing to illustrate a materialistic story, namely that we morphed into our modern form through unguided evolution uh, without any design. Instead of ending up with a nice clean line from an ape-like creature, chimpanzee-like creature, whatever, to a modern human being, uh, each discovery complicates matters even more than they were complicated before. So we still don't know uh, really what human evolution looked like, if in fact it was evolution at all. The fossils themselves do not provide the evidence for ancestry and descent. In some cases of what Jonathan Wells calls zombie science, outright theories in one time get promoted to alleged facts at another time. A book that came out in 2007, uh, Defending Evolution, contained a drawing of an 18-winged dragonfly and a four-winged dragonfly. And the book argued that the same sorts of mutations that could change the number of wings in a fruit fly could also change the number of wings in a dragonfly and explain why uh, an ancient extinct 18-winged dragonfly might have evolved into the modern four-winged dragonfly. Well, two years after the book came out, the author was in a debate with Discovery Institute fellows Stephen Meyer and Rick Sternberg, and Rick pointed out that there never was an 18-winged dragonfly. And the author acknowledged this, the author of the book, and said it was just a thought experiment. Fine, that was in 2009. Then in 2013, this same guy put out a textbook, a biology textbook, with the same drawing of the 18-winged dragonfly and the four-winged dragonfly. And that book, in 2013, claimed that the 18-winged dragonfly was a real fossil, was a real animal. So in just four years, the 18-winged dragonfly evolved from a thought experiment into a real fossil such as the power of zombie science. Even though one key argument for evolution after another seems to crumble, the theory keeps getting promoted in virtually all the major institutions of our culture. There are many challenges and problems with neo-Darwinism that uh, biologists, professional biologists, and uh, in particular, even evolutionary biologists know about. But in textbook presentations of the evidence, uh, those problems are glossed over and you get a kind of stylized or idealized version of the theory and, and a narrative that goes with it. A big problem with Darwinian evolution, uh, unguided macroevolution, is that it, it can give you whatever you want. Uh, if, if you find similarity, that's due to evolution. If you find dissimilarity, that's due to evolution. Uh, and so, a theory that explains everything, of course, really explains nothing. Politicians and activists are filling the airwaves with misinformation about abortion. But our free resource, Quick Pro-Life Answers, gives you clarity on the propaganda, answering questions like, is abortion now illegal? What about cases of rape and incest? Why should nine unelected judges decide what a woman can do with her body? And much more. Download Quick Pro-Life Answers from our website today, or we'll send you this valuable resource at no cost or obligation to you. Just call or write asking for Quick Pro-Life Answers to help you respond clearly and biblically. The famous evolutionary biologist an atheist, Richard Dawkins, once said, Darwin made it possible to be an intellectually fulfilled atheist. If you examine that statement closely, you see that it puts the atheism first and the support for it second. And as you've just seen, the evidence is not nearly as robust as they often claim. But Darwinian theory in service to atheistic ideology is more than just wrong. It's exceedingly dangerous. Dr. D. James Kennedy explains in his message the root of the problem. We have a lot of problems that have plagued this world in the last several centuries. And there have been a lot of great evils that have tromped back and forth across the world and have left hundreds of millions of people dead in their wake. The root of the problem 
of most of the great ills that have afflicted society and do afflict it today are caused by the teaching of evolution. It has been called the big lie, which has deceived hundreds of millions of people and has probably brought about more death than any other view in the history of the world. Evolution, which simply says that the whole universe is made up of nothing but matter. And matter, time, and chance, the trinity of materialism, have brought all things into existence that, they do, that do exist, and therefore there is no God. Parents may do all that they can to rear their children to be honest and godly and moral young people, to have purpose in their lives, and then they send them off to four years of college, and after that, they wonder what happened. And all of those things are undermined. And if that doesn't do it, a couple of years of graduate school are almost certain to destroy any vestige of belief in God, moral absolutes, morality, Americanism, patriotism, or any of those things. And that, my friends, is due to evolution. Evolution has made our public schools and universities and this college a mortal danger to the lives and souls of young people with tragic consequences. Because of evolution, man has lost his significance. Today, students are taught that man has no purpose because, you see, teleology the science of purposes is the bete noir, the black beast of evolution. They cannot stand that anything would have purpose. Teleology must go. And so, therefore, everything is not pre-planned by a divine intelligence and a beneficent God who providentially provides for his creatures. No, it all happens purely by chance with no foreview of what the end in mind is at all. Therefore, man has no purpose. Consequently, he has no significance. Of course, you know that Hitler was a devout evolutionist and a follower of Nietzsche and Haeckel, and that he taught evolution to his, to his troops. He gave them all, all of the Wehrmacht, a copy of uh, Darwin's book and Nietzsche's book, on, which talked about evolution of the God-man, of our becoming God, and he was absolutely determined to create a super race by getting rid of the inferior races. And by the way, racism is basically an evolutionary concept. The word race is never even used in the Bible, except for a foot race. But all of the 19th century evolutionists were strong racists, including Darwin, who said that the inferior races at some time in the future would all be destroyed by the superior races, and Hitler and others set out to do so. We also know that the founder of Planned Parenthood set out to get rid of the human weeds, as she called them, so that the superior stock might prevail. And also, I trust you know that communism is based upon evolution, as is Nazism, as is fascism. And the communists killed, according to the Senate Committee of the United States of America, 135 million people in peacetime. The greatest mass murderers of all time. Stalin and Mao and Pol Pot and all of the rest and all of that complements of evolution. Therefore, we can conclude with a statement made by a very famous evolutionist, Sir Arthur Keith. Arthur Keith was the number one evolutionist in Great Britain, and after or at the end of the 
Second World War, he said that what we have just seen is for the first time in history a modern, secular, technological state has based itself entirely upon the principles of evolution. He was horrified. He wrote 20 books defending evolution. And then he saw it in Nazi Germany and the Holocaust. And he was appalled. And he said also this, let me say in conclusion, I have come to this. Keep in mind who this is talking. The law of Christ is incompatible with the law of evolution. As far as the law of evolution has worked hitherto, nay, the two laws are at war with each other. The law of Christ can never prevail until the law of evolution is destroyed. The greatest evolutionist of Great Britain, Sir Arthur Keith. Hello, I'm Jennifer Kennedy Cassidy. As you just heard from my father, evolutionary theory has been the starting point for some of the deadliest movements in history, from Nazism to communism. Hitler's goal was to further the evolutionary destiny of his people, as Sir Arthur Keith said. And in pursuit of that goal, he killed millions. Yet a look at the evidence shows that all of this evil was all built on a false foundation. Though evolution is preached as fact by atheistic scientists, the evidence shows something different. Find out the truth in our Truth in Action Q&A booklet, Is Evolution True? The supporters of evolutionary theory try to portray those who won't buy into it as being like flat earthers. But did you know that the fossil record not only fails to support the theory of evolution, it seems to actually disprove it. And evolutionists say all of life developed randomly and accidentally. But did you know that's actually mathematically impossible? Get an overview of the truth about evolution in the booklet, Is Evolution True? We'll send you a three-pack of this booklet so you can also share it with others as our thanks for your generous donation. And if you're able to give a generous gift of $50 or more, we'll send you the booklet three-pack plus the important book, Zombie Science, More Icons of Evolution by Jonathan Wells of the Discovery Institute. Wells has done groundbreaking research showing that many of the so-called proofs for evolution have been fraudulent. Yet even after being disproved, they're still trotted out before unsuspecting students. Biology professor Michael Behe of Lehigh University says, zombie science poses a crucial question. If it's true that nothing in biology makes sense except in the light of evolution, as Darwinists often claim, why do textbooks continue to tout trivial, misleading, or downright fake illustrations? If these are the best examples, the theory itself is extinct. Discover the true facts surrounding evolutionary theory and how establishment science has tried to hide its weaknesses behind false and misleading claims. We'll send you the three pack of the booklet, Is Evolution True? as our thanks for your generous donation. And as thanks for your generous donation of $50 or more, we'll send you the booklets plus the full-length, groundbreaking book from Jonathan Wells, Zombie Science, More Icons of Evolution. And please, remember that as you donate, you are enabling us to refute the lies and false philosophies of an unbelieving culture, as well as to spread the good news of Jesus Christ through television, the internet, print resources, and documentary films, and so much more. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11154, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339, or call toll-free 877-962-7677, or go online to djkm.org. The question of where we came from is all important. Everyone naturally searches for meaning in life, asking, what's it all about? Why am I here? The Christian answer, drawn from God's revealing of himself in scripture, 
is that we human beings are created by God in his own image. And for that reason, each individual life is infinitely valuable. God created an orderly universe and placed us here to glorify him by obeying him, following him, and being fruitful in our life and in our work. However, since the arrival of Charles Darwin in the 19th century, a different answer to the question of the origins has taken hold. That view tells us that the universe is a cosmic accident that exploded into being out of nothing for no discernible reason. It tells us that life arose accidentally out of a conglomeration of chemical processes over time and that human beings are simply the most developed of this process. We are, as one evolutionist famously said, the result of a purposeless and natural process that did not have us in mind. When looking for meaning in life, we can see that these two answers take us to do very different places, polar opposites in fact. The biblical answer tells us that we derive our purpose from God, our designer. The evolutionary answer tells us that if we're going to have any meaning at all, we must make it up for ourselves. But that illusion cannot hold up for long. If we really believe we're just accidents here, our attempts to impose some made up meaning or significance on it will ultimately fail. We know when we're kidding ourselves. And sadly, we're now seeing the catastrophic results. Many, having failed to invent meaning for themselves, have instead turned to alcohol or drugs. Overdose deaths in America have more than doubled since 2015 to over 100,000 deaths last year. The national suicide rate has increased more than 30% since the year 2000 and is now the third leading cause of death among younger people. This is literally a matter of life and death. There is no merging these two worldviews. Either God created or he did not. And as a result, either life has meaning or it does not. This is not a time for Christians to be timid, despite the fervent efforts of radical God deniers to marginalize and silence us. Infinitely precious human lives are on the line. Let us proclaim to this world with everything we have in us that God is there, that he is not silent. And in the words of Saint Augustine, Thou hast made us for thyself, O Lord, and our heart is restless until it finds its rest in thee. D. James Kennedy Ministries is standing for truth and defending your freedom. I'm Pastor Rob Pacienza. Thank you for being with us. And here's a look at the next Truths That Transform. I think there is legitimate concern about what happened in prior elections and the 2020 election, but I think the 2020 election is unique. It's a unicorn. It was held in the middle of a pandemic. We had millions of ballots mailed out based only on registration lists instead of upon request by the voter. That's next week. This has been a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries.